So you got yourself a drone like this Foxeer Racing Quad, but like all the best toys growing up, batteries are not included. So how do you know which one to get? There's so many choices. Do you get the premium tattoo, the budget-friendly China Hobby Line, or do you go with something else like this Ovonic? 1400 so we're gonna tell you the secrets on how to pick the best battery for your needs now thanks to ovonic for sending me their new 1400 130c 6s pack rather than go and just do some bench tests i wanted to actually circle back and describe the process when selecting what battery to pick what battery to fly when to use what this discussion is primarily targeted around five inch quads what are the differences well when you're evaluating batteries there's four categories right there is the physical size there's the weight and then there's the capacity which is this number right here in this case 1400 or 1200 or 1100 then the c rating so if we look at a few of these other batteries here you see this one's rated at 100 c this one's rated at 80 c this one's rated at 100 c and the new ovonic 1400 is rated at 130c but here's what we can tell you is that these numbers are mostly garbage they're mostly made up uh, none of them are truly accurate they're all pretty much garbage right so what are you to do if you can't trust that number at all what you really need to trust more than the actual number on the pack is who is flying them how often they're being flown who's buying them and so that's why it's easier to break it down into two categories the top category for the best performance but also the highest cost and the china hobby line black which is essentially the lowest price you can pay and still get some decent performance so who do you look for for these for this data right and now let me tell you right now when it comes to batteries or even props bench testing is all but worthless all those fancy machines those are kind of numbers that give you averages and whatnot but they don't translate to real world performance and how these things behave in a real world scenario so let's go over the four categories weight when you're comparing size versus size weight does make a difference china hobby line tends to be heavier for the same weight, and they end up being physically larger you can see this 1105s is like almost the same size as this 1200 6s because china hobby line is often just bigger and heavier and also cheaper so tattoo manages to get higher quality cells which are usually a little bit physically smaller and lighter and so depending on what type of craft you're flying if you're going on a race quad physically smaller might be advantageous because if you do crash into a gate or a tree or anything it's less room for you to make that impact less weight for inertia to be able to cause damage to the cells itself now does that mean you should only buy these two batteries no not at all but when it comes to buying something else you need to evaluate price weight size c rating and see who else is flying them now ovonic's been out there in the market for a while china hobby line started in a similar way and China Hobby Line is pretty much certified fresh now. They kind of started out, if you remember how Hyundai was considered not as good as Honda back in the day, but now they're almost on par, maybe not quite. And that's kind of what China Hobby Line is doing. Ovonic has had a similar type of trajectory in this hobby. If you remember back to these Ovonics, these 100 Cs, these were actually pretty good. And I bought several of these, flew them probably interchangeably with the China Hobby Line. And these were actually physically smaller and lighter, but I got the similar performance out of them. So I really liked this option. Now, if you compare the Ovonic 1400 to the Tattoo 1400, it's actually slightly smaller. The Ovonic comes in at 218 grams. This one comes in at 223 grams. So it's smaller and slightly lighter, but this one's gonna perform better. It's just top of the line. If this one was on a good sale, there's some advantages for choosing a mid-range pack, right? So this is sort of your bottom range, but still acceptable. This is your top range, but on a particular sale day, if you find something that's priced in the middle, picking up a few of these might be a good option. And that kind of goes for all of these other brands as well. It's all about saving. Now, other top of the line packs um, these days would also be Dogcom. Pulse is generally very, very highly regarded. You can see this is a 1550 uh, and see how much larger that is. 
Um, when you get to this size and weight on a five inch, um, it actually sort of negatively impacts flight feel. So I don't really recommend flying these. I usually save these for like six or seven inch kind of things. Now, how do you protect these? Battery protector that Lamone calls the Lipo Coffin. And you can put that on there and just strap your strap around it. You can actually run this on a top mount battery as well or a bottom mount. And you see how it gives you that front impact protection. When you're running these expensive $40 batteries, it really stings when you kill one, especially on the first few flights. So always protect those batteries as best as you can. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is capacity. 1400, 1400, 1300, 1100. What do you go with? Well, you're probably going to want a few of each. If I want absolute performance, I'm going to fly this. But if I was flying on a very, very tight track, or if I wanted to cruise and take advantage of some weight savings, you can see that this 1200 is only 198 grams. So you save about 25 grams versus this, which is going to give you a little bit nicer flight feel. So if I don't need the extra capacity, I'll fly this. And that's why these China Hobby Line 1100s with one of these cheaper ones, the 6S version, this is actually a 5S, but the 6S version runs about $22. When I'm freestyling, even on 6S with a GoPro, sometimes I'll choose these little small, cheap $20 packs because if you're not really punching to the max throttle all the time, you can still get a good four or five minutes of flight time, even with a GoPro on board. It's only when you're really punching it that you're going to need these extra capacities or if you really want to fly for a very long time. Similarly, if I was flying something like the Slam Squirt 2, uh, this 1200 fits on the top plate a little bit better, but you can also fly that 1400 if you just wanted a little bit more flight time. Depending on what I'm doing, that's how I choose what I'm going to bring with me. The size considerations are if you're flying something like this tiny trainer, you can only fit so big of a battery in here. A lot of people fly the Tattoo 450s or the China Hobby Line 450s, but technically you can squeeze in a 550, which for me, when I'm racing on one of these small tracks, I want that extra capacity, but it wouldn't really be able to fit anything much bigger than this. So that's where the size comes in. But if there was a fifth category it would be how do you choose which cell count these batteries are 6s that means there are six individual cells each one of them providing 4.2 volts so this gives you a total 22.2 voltage here's a 4s and you can see this is 14.8 voltage so how do you determine if you need a 4s four cells or a 5S or a 6S. Well, that's based on the KV of your motor. Now there's a calculation you can use to get the RPM that your motor is going to spin. So this is a 1900 KV. Anything really kind of below 2000, you're gonna to wanna to use 6S. Anything that is 2000 to 2300, you're gonna to wanna to use 5S. And anything 2400 or above, you're gonna to wanna to use 4S. Now there was a time when 4S batteries were much, much cheaper than 6S. Premium 4S batteries, though, now are still about $30 if you get the top of the line, maybe more, uh, which puts you in the range of 6S. So if you're buying or building right now, it's better to go straight to 6S. Now, if you do have plenty of 4-cell batteries and quads, it's perfectly fine to stay on those sizes. If they get the flight time that you like, you can actually save a little bit of weight there but typically a 6s is going to have less sag when you go to full throttle and so that will translate to longer flight times what do you notice about these two things though is that this 1300 4s is much physically smaller and much lighter probably weighs 40 or 50 grams less than this 6s it used to be cost as well but that's no longer the case so i typically prefer 6s because you get more power more ability to go to that full throttle range throughout the pack and more flight time. Every one of these options on the table is pretty good. Some are better than others, but I'm going to go ahead and make things very simple for you. Let's just talk about these two right here. This is the Tattoo R-Line series. Now, currently they are on version 5.0, which is represents the best LiPo that you can buy for your Five inch drone. This is a China Hobby Line Black Series. This represents the best value that you can get. Now there's the 1400, the 1200, and the 1300. For the 6S 
black series there's 1100 and 1300 and 1500 and you also have the speedy pizza drones 1200 that is actually also a china hobby line pack so don't be confused by that the difference between these are this one's about 40 dollars this one's about 22 dollars depending on what your purpose is you may want to buy this one or you may want to buy this one or you may want to buy some of each depending on what type of flying you're going to do now when i'm going to a competition i'm running the best battery possible but when i'm training or practicing or flying at the night spot on concrete where there's a very high chance i could be killing some of these batteries in fact look at the state of this one right here i'm probably going to practice and train if you want something max performance see what the racers are using they're using tattoo r line and dog com primarily if you want something that is going to be budget friendly and still pretty good see what a lot of your freestylers are running they go through a lot of packs because they crash very hard but they don't always send it full throttle as much as the racers and of course there's going to be some people that don't really follow those trends but on average racers push the max performance they're going to know that regardless of the cost what's going to give you the best performance freestylers on average are going to give you the best value because they really bash things and they may crash and kill batteries more frequently than the racers do especially those guys like bot grinder and his crew that tend to fly a lot of bandos so hopefully this helps you guys the four categories to look for weight size c rating and capacity the c rating is mostly bullshit so how did this perform on the track actually pretty good it performed like almost indistinguishably from the r line but i don't know if after time it would survive as well if it would bounce back after hard depletions so i would put this categorized as a mid-range pack until i had more practice so if the top of the range is 40 dollars, the bottom of the range is 20 dollars. when these goes on sale and they hit the range of about 30 dollars, that's when you're going to want to buy them so i don't know what the price of this is going to be uh, i don't think it's come out yet but it'll be out very soon i'll put the links below as soon as they're available lastly how do you tell if a battery is still safe after you've crashed it put it on the charger check if the cells are all still showing if this is a success battery and i only see five cells this is bad no longer use it give it a smell if it smells sweet or like fingernail polish remover acetone anything like that the electrolytic in here is leaking out and it is now very volatile um, you want to Tra transport this very carefully your local recycling center will be able to dispose of this for you or you could put it in sand or you could pierce the cells they may light up and fire if you do that do it in a very safe way or you can soak these in salt water or if your charger has a kill mode you can also do that but if you do that do it outside on a patio um, away from your house in a safe place dispose of them never try to charge a pierced lipo if it's smelling and if you're in doubt in any way just dispose of it it's not worth the fire hazard get rid of it if you suspect that it is bad so this has been the fpv beginner series here on the channel if you like this type of content or you appreciate that you can give it to a friend or a buddy or a new person that's trying to make a decision that's new to the hobby save yourself a breath don't tell somebody 10 minutes of talking when you can just shoot them this video and let them watch it for 10 minutes you know what you can do with those 10 minutes you can go get yourself a cup of coffee you can go fly yourself a couple of packs less explaining to your noob friends means more flying for you let me do the explaining thanks guys let's get to the secrets guys i'm gonna tell you the secrets the secrets so we're gonna tell you the secrets on how to pick the best battery for